Welcome back. You're still watching Network Africa right here on Channels Television. Well, unfortunately, we have reports that Boko Haram militants attacked the northern Nigerian town of Buniyadi in Yobe State late yesterday, and it was unclear how the fighting came to an end. Buniyadi was one of the towns that was captured by the insurgent group back in 2014 and then reclaimed in March this year by the Nigerian army. Boko Haram has been trying to carve a state adhering to strict Sharia law in the country since 2009. The group took over large swathes of territory last year, but were pushed back into the uh, last stronghold in the Sambisa Forest Reserve with the combined efforts of Nigerian and regional forces. Boko Haram seems persistent in its attacks on the West African region. However, regional forces are even more dedicated to crushing the sect. Cameroon's army has repulsed an attack by the sect and killed three of the Islamist militants in heavy fighting in the far north region of the country. According to an army spokesman, this particular attack represented a change of tactics by the militants following a series of battlefield defeats this year in which they've lost territory to a regional force that comprises N Nigeria, Niger, Chad and Cameroon. Now to some news from East Africa. It's no longer news that Burundi is facing immense challenges with President Nkurunziza seeking to run for a third term. What is news is that a Burundi general, who was part of a failed coup attempt in May, said his group is still working to oust President Pierre Nkurunziza, accusing him of stoking ethnic divisions in a country still trying to recover from a civil war. The president who... Or this, this, this general in question, who served the president as a senior intelligence officer in government and during the Civil War, was a rebel fighter, and he accuses the president of plunging the country into even deeper crisis than what was recorded back in 2005. Well, we're joined by Africa analyst Mr. Warwick Oyema. He's been monitoring the developments in Burundi very closely all the way from London. Mr. Oyema, thank you very much for your time again right here on Network Africa. Thank you. Now, the last time we spoke to you, we, we do recall the advice you gave concerning Burundi. It looks as though this general in question has taken your advice as he says he and his team generals are determined to oust the president. Well, I think you can uh, say that in the present situation, that looks like the only means of getting rid of this sit tight, self-interested uh, politician who seems determined to remain in power no matter the price to the country. And a threat of military uh, intervention seems to be the only way to focus his mind on alternatives. Now, Dr. Oyema, the first time the coup attempt took place in the president's absence, it did fail. My question to you is, how easy or how difficult do you reckon ousting him could be? Oh, it will be difficult, because don't forget that he has created his own private army, a sort of armed militia of the youth wing of his political party, who are dressed in police uniforms, usually, and told to go and suppress any uh, dissent to his decision. So he has armed supporters of his own, and it will not be easy. I mean, shots will have to be fired and casualties taken, uh, no matter what uh, side it is that launches uh, the initiative. Well, finally, Dr. Aim, I know you said it's going to be a, a difficult process, but in the long run, how do you see the events in Burundi playing out? I think, well, you see, the East African community has now become much more active than it was and is put in place. Not only has it persuaded Nkurunziza to postpone the elect presidential election to the 30th, but it has put in place observers from a number of East African countries who, to ensure, one, that um, armed militia are disarmed, for the purposes of the election, and two, that the election is conducted in a free and fair manner. And there is a third provision they've made, and that is whoever wins the election 
has got to agree to a unity government that includes representatives from all sides. So the political climate there has changed very considerably in the last 48 hours. Oh, well, Dr. Oyema, thank you very much. As always, it's been a pleasure having you join us right here on Network Africa. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. Mr. Oyema is an African news analyst speaking to us from London. Now, we're still looking at politics. Uganda's former Prime Minister, Amama Mbabazi, is not deterred by his arrest yesterday. He says he will not back down in his preparations for a presidential bid. Mr. Mbabazi, a former close ally of President Yoweri Museveni, was arrested while traveling to canvas support. The charges leveled against him include the government saying that he violated public order laws by attempting to hold meetings without permission. The long-serving president is widely expected to seek re-election next year. Leading opposition figure Kiza Besige was also arrested on Thursday ahead of a planned campaign rally outside of the capital, Kampala. And both men were later released without charge. Well, coming up on Network Africa. On today's Africa Tech segment, two Nigerian teenagers create a mobile web browsing app known as Crocodile Browser Lite. Details when we return. <laughs> 